essentially what we wanted to do with Blackmagic Raw was develop a codec that was smaller in size so we could retain all of the information of RAW, but compress that into tiny, small file sizes. We also wanted to make it easier to work with. So instead of a, of a single frame format, you now get a single file. And that's a lot easier to work with in post-production terms. So that was another one of our key aims. I guess one of the big benefits of, of Blackmagic RAW is that it's an intelligent codec. So instead of being a generic raw file container, we're able to actually work specifically with the camera's image sensor and the characteristics of that, of that sensor so that we can retain all the information and the metadata and write that down to the file so that every time you use that file, all of the information exists and you're able to manipulate that in a post-production environment. And you're getting additional benefits of it being a full 12-bit codec rather than a video codec. So you're retaining all of the information that you can then take into post-production. So one of the things that you are able to do with the files, as you see on this iMac Pro that we have on the booth here, is view them on any computer. We, we now have a Blackmagic RAW player for Mac, for Windows, and for Linux. So you can immediately get access to those files. And that's really useful because it means that even if you're working on location, you want to preview those files, you want to pass those files off to somebody else, um, they can simply open them up and use them. One of the things that you do see in the in, uh, menu structure is that you've got a sidecar file. And that goes, that stays in association with the raw file. But what the sidecar file contains is if I, I can watch that with a text edit um, file. This is a human readable file. So all of the information that's within um, the Blackmagic RAW file is visible within the sidecar. That's really important when people want to pass these files off to other projects uh, because it means it's easy to understand. It opens up in a, in a, in a way that can be read and altered um, and changed even. And, the, and changing the settings, which I could do manually in that file, would change the appearance of the clip. It's all about control over what's within that image. So Blackmagic RAW is immediately available for the Ursa Mini Pro camera that we've got here at IBC. And, and it, it just features now as part of the camera menu system. And you now see as soon as you go into the record settings that immediately Blackmagic RAW is appearing on there. You get a number of options that you can choose from. And that is you can either choose to record in Blackmagic RAW using constant bit rate, which is how most codecs work. So it sets the bit rate of the codec and it compresses everything to that bit rate. But we also offer the option to use constant quality which is kind of like a variable bit rate, where actually it's the quality that stays consistent as opposed to the bit rate. So that's a really valuable opportunity for people because they get to choose a way of working which suits the type of project that they're doing. So I think it's important that people can use the formats and the codecs that they're used to and that, and that they're familiar with already on the camera. So this is an addition to the camera rather than a replacement. So we've kept the Cinema G DNG format in there. We also have ProRes within the camera as well. So if people are used to using their camera already with those formats, they still exist inside the camera. All of our cameras that shoot RAW, we're looking to bring Blackmagic RAW into those cameras. People essentially are saying, look, this will be incredible with the brand new Pocket Cinema Camera 4K because you want to record RAW and you want to record 4K, but you want to get that to an SD card. And that's exactly what Blackmagic RAW is for. It's that ability to work with a compressed RAW format so you can get file sizes small enough to work with lower cost media like SD cards. I mean, one of the things that's really interesting about this, and, and I think it really is the spirit of Blackmagic Design in, in, in our openness, is that from day one of launching this on our website, we've also made an SDK available for Mac, for Windows, and for Linux that can be downloaded straight away by third-party developers so that they can read the Blackmagic RAW codec within any software that they're developing. And I think, essentially, that's great because you know we're not making a charge for that, we're making it openly available, and that means that Blackmagic RAW becomes available to all of those software companies. But I think it'd be really interesting to see what other software developers can do to incorporate this so that they also can read Blackmagic RAW.